and burn it. So they were very careful to get it right. They had a checking system that was really pretty goof-proof. They made all these copies and they spread out around the world because this was a time of great persecution. Christians are getting persecuted so they spread out to different countries and they bring their copies of Bibles with them. So you got somebody in India who's copying the Bible and somebody in France who's copying the Bible and pretty soon these, the copy wears out. Let's just pick a few numbers here. This is a book from the early 1900s. It's a very beautiful book and it's beginning to get worn out. If this book was in active use, if I opened it and closed it and read from it every single day, it would shorten the life of it. If it just simply sits on the shelf, of course, it lasts longer. But a book in active use is going to quickly fall apart, as this one has already begun to fall apart, and it's not in active use, believe me. The scrolls that are in active use are not going to last more than maybe 200 years. Let's be generous here. Let's say, a, let's say a book lasts 200 years if you use it every day. So they use these scrolls or Bibles, and they're copying from it every day. At the end of the day, they roll it up and they put it away. Within 200 years, it's worn out. It's rags. You, you throw it away. But it doesn't matter because by then you have, you know, 50 copies you've made off of this thing, or maybe 100 copies. They've made copy after copy after copy of these scrolls or books. So you have exact copies of the original. The original is junk by now, so you throw it away. It doesn't matter. You take those 50 copies and you begin making copies off of those. And again, a very careful copying process, but after, you know, a few hundred years they are junk, so you throw them away. This goes on, you know, several generations, and now you're on the fourth or fifth or sixth generation from the original, and now you have thousands of exact copies of the original, which is long gone. It's been thrown away, you know, years and years ago. Okay, about the early 1500s, they decided to put the Bible into English. And so Erasmus and Luther and Tyndale and, you know, the Geneva Bible and all this was made in the 14, 15, late early 1500s, and throughout the 1500s, they're making copies of the Bible, they're translating it to English. They gathered around, they went around and gathered up old scrolls that they could find and copies of the Bible, and they found about 5,000 copies of Scripture uh, from countries all over the world. This group of manuscripts became known as the Texas Receptus, the Received Text. They looked at all these scrolls and could find no differences except the spelling of people's names and the spelling of cities, you know, like Peter and Pedro and stuff like that. So they made English translations, and finally the King James in 1611 was made from these text, the, what's called the majority text. Meanwhile, down in Egypt, there was a group of folks called the Alexandrians down in Alexandria, Egypt, which was at that time a major city. A major library was there, which later burned, but a major city in Alexandria, Egypt. There was a cult down there called the Alexandrians. They were sort of like Jehovah's Witnesses. They wanted everybody to think they were Christian, but they believed a lot of strange things. So they made their own version of the Bible. They left out a lot of verses they didn't like. They changed little things here and there. It was a careful counterfeit, but a counterfeit nonetheless. They have this Alexandrian Bible, and some copies were made, and uh, the primary guy in, in this cult was a guy named Origen, who lived about 240 A.D. In uh, 350 A.D., two copies of the Alexandrian Bible were made, and those copies are called the uh, Sinaiticus, because it was found in the Sinai Desert in a monastery, and Vaticanus, because it was found in the Vatican Library in the basement, I believe. Those two copies from 350 A.D. are still around today. You know, 1,600 years old copies of the Scriptures, well, of the Alexandrian Bible. The Latin Vulgate was made from those manuscripts in uh, 380 A.D. It was translated to Latin. Then in uh, 1582, the Catholic Church ordered the translation of the Latin Vulgate into English, and that's where the Douay Confraternity and the Douay Reims version come in. The Douay versions were made from the Latin, which was a good translation, of the wrong manuscript. They're translating the Alexandrian. So they got the bad manuscript, the corrupt, you know, cult manuscript, being translated into English, which became the official Catholic version in use today, the Douay version of the Bible. Two guys named Westcott and Hort came along in 1875, and they took these Alexandrian manuscripts, of which I think about 15 or 17 of them were found, I don't know, and they said, these are old manuscripts, therefore they're better. Well, now hold on a minute. Yes, they're older, but that doesn't mean they're better. They're older because they're worse. The people didn't use them. They didn't wear them out. But they made a modern Greek version of the Bible from this ancient one. They, you know, put it on new paper, new ink, and made a new Greek edition in 1875. This was then translated into English, at least the New Testament in Greek, 
And so the English translations of the Alexandria of the of the Westcott and Hort text include the revised version done in 1881, the American Standard version done in 1901, the revised standard in 1946, and that's the Bible I got saved from, the New World Translation, Jehovah's Witness Bible, made in 1950. The New American Standard Bible made in 1960, the Good News Bible, the Amplified Bible, the Living Bible, and the NIV. All of those are good translations of the wrong manuscript. So I don't fault the translators. I think they're probably sincere men, probably intelligent men, but they're translating the wrong book. They need to get the right Bible. The first mention of Alexandria is in Acts chapter 9 when they were disputing with Stephen, arguing with the Christians. And we still got the same thing today with these different versions of the Bible arguing with the, uh, the real Bible. Okay, my Jehovah's Witness Bible on my shelf will probably never get worn out. It doesn't mean it's better, it just means I'm not going to use it. Okay, I have one, I have a Mormon Bible, I'm just I'm not going to use it. So that's the story. There are more manuscripts of the Bible than any other book ever written in ancient times. Homer's Iliad, for instance, there are only 643 manuscripts known today. By 1946, they had discovered 24,000 manuscripts of the Bible. Then when the Dead Seas were scroll, scrolls were found in 1947, they now have 40,000 new manuscripts to work from. So the Dead Sea Scrolls made it up to the total now of 64,000 manuscripts of Scripture. The Isaiah Scroll is a thousand years older than any known manuscript anywhere in the world. And it's, uh, it matches exactly the Texas Receptus, the King James. I recommend you get the book New Age Bible Versions. You can order it from my ministry or go to avpublications.com if this topic interests you about studying different Bible versions. And we could spend hours about that one, but that's enough. Next question, what is God like anyway? Man is a three-dimensional person, 